Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We're at Steve's house and we're celebrating a bit of his German heritage today. Yeah, and it was all inspired by your Easy Peasy Pilsner. Easy Peasy Pilsner. <laughs> and the, I did a lager. I, I very seldom, well, I do maybe a lager a year. Yes. Um, but I, I was inspired back in January when I brewed this beer. My basement was at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, which ah. is great uh, lager primary fermentation temperature. So the Rathskeller was perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what I, did, what I did, you've got some already. I do. I do. Uh, why don't you pour me some while I talk about this beer? All right. So I'm calling it Easy How Peasy you Pilsner. Off? You twist. There you go. Let's twist again, like we did last summer. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm calling an easy peasy pilsner because it's just a straightforward, uh, single infusion, uh, single temperature, single infusion mash. Yeah. Um, what? Let me get into the details. So please do. We uh, we do beer. start with. 20 quarts of water at 162 degrees Fahrenheit, or 19 liters at 72 C. And to that, I add 11 pounds, or 4.9 kilograms, of German Pilsner malt. That's it. That's it. Then, uh, I'm mashed at 152 degrees Fahrenheit, or 66.6 C, for 60 minutes. And I did a, a, a batch sparge. So again, easy. So mm -hmm. I ran off the first runnings and then added 16 quarts of water at 170 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 liters at 76.6 C. And I collected my wort and I started my boil uh, to which I added two ounces or 56 grams of Czech Saz hops for 90 minutes and then one ounce of Czech Saz hops uh, at flame out. It's a single malt and single hop beer or a smash beer. So uh, you got to cool down the temperature of the wort mm -hmm. to get down to lager pitching temperature. And to do that, I used our trick that we show on our lagering DVD of running the wort chiller and then recirculating ice water with a pond pump right. through the immersion chiller. And I got it down to pitching temperature, which was the temperature of my basement, 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. And I pitched two packages of Saf Lager S23 yeast, mm -hmm. rehydrated, and there I let it ferment. Uh, oh, by the way, my original gravity was 1048. I let it ferment in the basement uh, for two weeks, and then I brought it up for a couple of days uh, for a, a diacetyl rest mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, the yeast has all the opportunity to uh, get rid of all those buttery off flavors. Scrub it out. And then I put it in my kegerator, the secondary fermenter in my kegerator, and eased it down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, where I kept it for a couple of weeks, and then I kegged it after that. So what do you think? I think it's absolutely delicious. Great job. Well, thank you. Really. Um, yeah, this has got any butter scotch going on mm -hmm. in it. it. You know, it's like what Budweiser is supposed to be. <laughs> so good job. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. There's a little bit of a DMS. A little bit of a corny thing that comes with that very lightly just a little uh, uh, kilned uh, base malt, <clears throat> but that's appropriate for the style. And yeah, I, and I like it. I like this quite a lot. I mean, this is a really nice. This is a commercial beer. I mean, this is mm. what you know. If you if you have some people over, they've never had homebrew before. They're Budweiser drinkers. Not picking up Budweiser, but you know <laughs> that's what they're used to. Mm -hmm. They would love this. I and mean, the hop character is not in your face like an IPA or, mm -mm. or, or a pale ale or no. anything like that. But it's nice and mm. crisp and fresh and tasty. Uh, now, to go with this, I challenged Steve to come up with some dishes. And I also made some sauerkraut right. lately. And uh, you may have seen the way we make sauerkraut on an episode back a couple of years ago. Real simple. Chop up a cabbage, add salt put it in a crock, add some weight to the top of it, let it make its own brine, and then uh, let it sit in there and sour for a couple weeks, and you got sauerkraut. Got sauerkraut. So what did you do with it? I left it alone because <laughs> it's really good sauerkraut. You know, the store-bought stuff is just not as good right. as what you can make it at your house. And so James made this beautiful sauerkraut, and I thought, let's just do something really simple 
So let's go to the past and the future and see what happens when the train comes home. <laughs> This easy peasy pilsner that James made is just delicious. He also made some sauerkraut. And I got to thinking, we gotta have some German food with that. A German pilsner, German sauerkraut. So we did a pork roast. And we're going to just be really simple here. This isn't about being fancy and, and showing off a whole lot of ingredients. This is my grandmother's recipe for fried kraut. We're gonna start with the sauerkraut that James made. And we're going to put a little butter into a pan this is the easy part. This is the easy peasy part of the recipe. So a little bit of butter. Now grandma probably would have used bacon grease. Pan's a little hot. That's all right. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And we'll just add a little bit of onion here. I'm not gonna do too much of this. Let that cook for just a minute. I'm going to toss in about a half a teaspoon of caraway seed and let those get all nice and warm and aromatic. And finally our sauerkraut. Oh boy. I'm going to add just a little bit of chicken stock just to give it a little moisture. And that is the fried kraut. Once it cooks down, once that cooks down, it's going to be delicious. Now, to go with it, you've got to have a little starch. So what I made are some German Spätzl or Spätzli. And uh, this is just the, the homemade German noodle. It's very easy to make. Um, give you directions on the show. I'm going to do it the exact same way. So we're adding some butter to the pan. I'm going to add a little onion, just a little handful. A bit more ham. Let this cook for just a minute. This really will just take a second for it to get hot. You just want the onions to cook down a couple minutes. See how this guy's doing. Can you smell that, James? Yes. Yeah. Get out of the camera. Yum. Jeez Louise, it does smell good. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to hit this with a couple of servings of the Spätzle. Don't they make sprockets? Spätzle sprockets? That's what they, they do. See, I always pronounce it Spätzle. So all you real German speakers out there, because I'm from the Midwest in the United States, I say Spätzle, but I think it's Spätzle or Spätzle. So somebody correct me. Somebody straighten me out on that. Oh, I'm sure they will. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, so this has come up. Wow, that looks really good. I'm going to give this a, just a little bit of chicken stock as well. And finally... Nice helping of uh, flat leaf parsley. Yum. Everything's good and hot. Wow. Super easy. I mean, no you, we basically show you cooking that in real time. Yeah. So we got the sauerkraut, we got the noodles. <laughs> I'm going to cop out on the word. <laughs> And then we have this uh, pork roast that you made mm -hmm. that I'm sure was real simple, too. You know, it's just a Boston butt. I rubbed it down with some spicy mustard. Um, forgive me, it was French mustard for a German recipe. But <laughs> what are you going to do? And that was it. A little salt and, and some mustard. I put it in a 265-degree oven for five and a half hours. Falls off the bone. You can't beat it. Mm. Uh, I just wanted to get the really good flavors, really simple flavors. This is my grandma's house when I was a kid. Holy smokes. The meat is really good. Oh. It's sauerkraut. Mm. The spätzle is killer. Sauerkraut is nicely sour. And the thing about sauerkraut is you can... Mm -hmm. Oh, and was it, was it caraway seeds? Yeah. Oh, 
That's really away. nice. It's kind of a uh, an anise kind of yeah. licorice flavor. It goes along with it. thing. It's really good. The mm. thing about sauerkraut is you can let it sour pretty much as to your level uh, of taste and then put it in the fridge, which is what I did. Yep. And it'll keep there. I mean, it's designed to preserve the food. So it's going as long as you mm. keep it in that brine, it's going to keep. Mm-hmm. Mm. They're so good. You know, good food and good lagers don't have to be complicated. No. I mean, I mean, I could have done a decoction mash with this, and we have done decoction mash beers in the past. Mm -hmm. We've made a DVD about it. <laughs> <laughs> and those are really tasty, really delicious. Uh, but this, easy peasy, yeah, one malt, one hop, super easy. Mm -hmm. all, you, all you need is the proper temperature uh, to ferment. And pork and ham, and which is pork, and, <laughs> and noodles and cabbage. Mm. And life is good. <laughs> Take a look at the recipe uh, in the description of our, on our website of this episode or in the Basic Brewing app on your iPhone or Android device. And we will, did we, did we salute? I don't know. Cheers. Cheers. We'll see you next time. Happy brewing. Happy brewing. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. We're rolling. All right, well, this easy peasy, easy. <laughs> you didn't tell me it was a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs>